One of the first important things that I do with every new website is configure my permalink structure. You can do this by clicking permalinks under the settings menu. And what this does is it determines what your post and page URLs are going to look like. So often, by default, the permalink structure will look something like this. It'll be your domain name with a cryptic post ID number at the end. And that would be the web address that shows up for a blog post, for example. When you look at that, it doesn't really mean anything. It's pretty ugly, and it's also not very search engine friendly. What we want is a URL structure that is readable to humans and also has the ability to tell search engines what the page is about. So for me, I tend to go with the simple post name structure. So that's literally just adding the name of the post to the end of the URL. So like bradstestsite.com slash sample dash post. That's perfect. However, there are other options here. For example, if you run a news website or something that is very timely and you want to have the date in the URL, you can also do something like day and name or month and name, or you can do a custom structure where you use any of these variables to construct your own URL structure. I'm just going to go with post name because that's simple. Uh, the key here is that you want to set this once and don't mess with it ever again. Because once you've set it, you know, there are going to be links out there. You're going to be linking within your own website. People are going to link to you. And if you change this in the future, it's very possible that you'll have a lot of broken links. Because if somebody's linking to this URL and then you change your link structure so that this is the correct link that may cause problems with people trying to reach your post and it may also cause issues with search engines who aren't sure where the actual post is located so i would select one of these now commit to it and don't change these settings again unless you absolutely need to now at the bottom you can change the category base and tag base so Typically, the way your category archive works is it's going to be your domain name slash category slash the name of the category. So uh, the example would be bradstestsite.com slash category slash uncategorized, right? And same thing with tags. If we said football as a tag, it would be bradstestsite.com slash tag slash football. What these options do is they replace the word category and the word tag in those URLs. So instead of category, you could have topic or topics. Instead of tag, you could have, I don't know, sports, bradstestsite.com slash sports slash football. That is totally optional. I usually skip it. But if you do want to customize those links a little bit, you can. But like I said before, I do recommend that you configure this once and leave it the same for the foreseeable future. Once again, make sure you save your changes and your settings should take effect right away.